In a prior video, I explored some of the key differences between enhanced autopilot and basic autopilot. What I really didn't touch on was how effective enhanced autopilot is in your day-to-day -day drives. Today, we're gonna to take a look at using enhanced autopilot as part of my normal daily drive routine. We'll see how enhanced autopilot performs during the first part of my morning commute to work, and that way you'll get a little better perspective on how reliable it really is. So let's head to the highway. So we just got on the highway. I'm navigating to my place of work, and I want to use enhanced autopilot to get me there. Once you pull things up on your Tesla navigation and input a destination, you'll see this little button down here at the bottom uh, to kind of turn on enhanced autopilot, or specifically navigate on autopilot. What we'll do here is double pull, and you can see with the single solid line, enhanced auto, that tells you enhanced autopilot is activated. So I'm just gonna dial up my speed here a little bit and we will see how we navigate, we'll see how we do. Now the first part of my commute is pretty straightforward. I've got uh, a straight line here on the highway. It's going to branch off into about three different highways coming up here in about uh, five miles. And that's gonna require my car to get over to the, the left two lanes. So right here, we're slowing down a little bit because of uh, the vehicle in front of me. You know, the one thing that, that I've noticed about enhanced autopilot and even autopilot in general is just the, the kind of the conservative, conser how conservative it is when it's uh, on the highway here. Uh, where I may have, like in this case here, where I may speed up a little bit to get past this truck that I just passed on the left, I still have plenty of room in front of me. Um, the car is holding me back. You can see the speed, it's dialed down. I still have room. So in this case, I'm gonna kind of like accelerate here and move over. And it kind of delayed there a little bit because there was these two cars coming up in the far left lane. You notice them. So the uh, auto lane change piece was, was somewhat delayed there. And that's, uh, that's something that I've, I've noticed more and more. And I can't necessarily complain about it because the car is trying to be safe. But when it pauses like that, I start getting concerned about other cars coming up on me, whether it's right behind me or in the lane that I'm trying to uh, change into, which to me creates additional concerns. So it's just, it's, I have a hard time with uh, how careful the car's being at times. So now we've got people merging here. We've got this truck up here on the right. Looked like he was trying to get over, but decided against it. So, um, makes me a little bit nervous there. Now, I should be in the appropriate lane when we come up here for the, the, uh, the highway split. And actually, it's having me go uh, the opposite way that I normally go. So, there's two highways that, that split off up here. There's actually three. Um, either two of the three will get me to my destination. Uh, I typically take one of them over the other just because of traffic, but Tesla, Tesla Nav is, is actually taking me on the other one. Um, so, see it, now it's auto lane changes wanting me to get over, so I'll humor it, look it over. And you noticed it asked me to confirm the lane change. And that's because of the setting that I have. I don't necessarily trust it enough right now to um, do the lane change on its own. I can change that setting uh, under enhanced autopilot settings, but uh, until I get a better feel for how 
navigate on autopilot and all the link change is, is working, I've decided to uh, not use that setting here. So we'll stick with the route that it's suggesting for us here. Um, I'm in the right lane. I'm in the correct lane here. So we'll just let it do its thing. And you can see these lanes are not uh, the normal lanes. There was some construction going on here last summer. So they've got some painted lanes here. I don't know how well the camera's picking this up. There's a huge glare from the sun coming in from the, the east as it's coming up. And the car, where it makes it difficult for me to see and squint through it, but the car picks it up okay. So, so asking for a lane change here, I confirm it. As long as you keep your blinker on, and the blinker is what confirms the lane change for the vehicle. Um, at least until you're about, about halfway over that, that center line, it'll uh, take you through the lane change. I have noticed in prior cases where I didn't keep my blinker on long enough, I just kind of, you know, tapped it up to, to hold it and came off of that turn signal and the car, uh, the car canceled the lane change. So we've got traffic merging in here from another highway. I've got the uh, Popo here. Just kind of keep an eye on things. Pretty straightforward, it's just keeping me in my, my same lane. Now I know in, we've got uh, a split where I'm getting off on another highway here in about six miles. And we'll cover that windshield wiper thing here in a minute. Um, I know I have to be in the far right-hand lane for this highway split, so I'll be interested to see how long it's going to take the car to get over to that lane change. This traffic can get kind of heavy up here, and um, you wait too long, you kind of find yourself in jail and, and uh, have to ask for some forgiveness to get over. So you'll notice the windshield wipers are, are going on here, and it's not raining. This is one of the annoyances with autopilot. Currently, if you engage autopilot, uh, the auto wipers turn on. You'll notice here, if I try to shut them off, um, I cannot turn off my autopilot exactly. And I kind of get it, right? It's, it's trying to keep the, the area over the camera clear so it can do its thing. But it's really annoying because there is absolutely no condensation, precipitation, water, whatever you want to call it on the windshield. So there's no reason for these, these uh, wipers to be going off right now. So you just kind of got to live with it unless you want to shut off autopilot. So it's asking me to do a lane change, confirm the lane change to the left because it's, my speed has slowed down to what my max speed is set to. So again, that's a different setting. You can control how aggressive you want it to be. Um, I'm ignoring that suggestion to change lanes because I know I need to get over to the right here. And it doesn't seem to care. Um, and we have the bright sun coming up here. steering wheel too much. So that was kind of weird. Put it back on. Alright, so I am going to force a lane change here. It does its thing. And I'm going to do another lane change. And a little bit of hesitation there when when I first asked it to do its lane change, uh, but then it, I mean, it was just like a split second thing. It actually has been working pretty well this morning. So I'm, um, I'm going to need to get over 
one more lane here coming up and we'll let the car do it on its own and see how long it takes it. And I've got about one and a half miles before my, my exit from this highway onto another one. We'll see how it does. So yeah, I've got um, one more lane and I technically should be go the other highways, so it's been a while since I've taken this, I've never remember which lane I'm supposed to be. So it's taking this slight curve on the highway at about 70 miles an hour, slowed down a little bit, I've got brakes in front of me, the car is slowing down on its own. Um, we are going directly east and, no, I shouldn't say directly east, but we're going somewhat east, the sun is shining on us. Um, so let's see how it does here related to coming up on all this traffic. Now it wants me to do a lane change. I got cars coming up. I'm not really going to do that. I can do it now. Interesting little bit of hesitation there. And this is this is what's frustrating to me a little bit. So it did its lane change okay, but now it's taking forever to speed up. It it and luckily you all can't see. I don't I didn't have any cars behind me. But it was, there was a definite lag around executing that lane change, which was smart because if I would have stayed in that lane, it would have, I would have had to get off on that, that exit. I forgot about that there. Um, but the, the, that's the one thing I've noticed. There, there is this, this lag that the vehicle has. It's not as intuitive as um, if I was controlling the car. I guess I'm a little bit more aggressive driver than what autopilot is. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, but uh, I, it can annoy some other people uh, that uh, are used to maybe more aggressive, aggressive style of driving. So I'm not gonna bore you with the entire commute on the way in. It seemed like it did fairly well. Uh, let's go get a lane change here to get around some slow traffic. So, yeah. Um, hope you guys found this helpful. We'll experiment with some of the other settings in Enhanced Autopilot and uh, take a look at those in some future videos.